Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at the solutions to questions 6 to 10 of the Junior Kangaroo paper from 2019. That's the follow-on round to the Junior Maths Challenge for students that have done really well in that paper. But I actually don't think you should watch this video because I've taken all of the questions from the Junior Kangaroo from 2019 as well as the Junior Olympiad from 2019 and put them into a totally free online course. So you can go over to that online course by clicking at the link in the description below and you can work through all of these questions one at a time and then watch my video solutions. I've also got a totally free course over there going through the Junior Maths Challenges from 2020 and 2021 if you haven't already seen that and I'll put that in the link, that link in the description below as well. Um, if you haven't already taken the Junior Maths Challenge, the best place to start would be with the Junior Maths Challenge papers and then go on to the Kangaroo and the Olympiad papers once you're ready for them. In question six, we've got a quadrilateral PQRS, and we're told that the length of PQ is 11 centimeters. I'm going to write this on my slightly bigger diagram again here. Uh, QR is seven centimeters. This one, that one, that's this one here. Uh, the length of RS is nine centimeters, and the length of SP is three centimeters. And we're also told that QRS and SPQ are right angles. So you've got a right angle here and a right angle here. Uh, always put things on the diagram um, as, as you read through the question here. Diagrams in these questions make life a lot easier. It says, what is the area of the quadrilateral PQRS? Well, we don't have any formula for quadrilaterals in general, so we're going to have to split this shape down uh, into things that we can work out the area of. And these right angles here are a big clue, because what it means is if I draw a line here, uh, SQ, I've split this shape into two triangles, and we can just use the formula for the area of a triangle, a half uh, base times height on each of these triangles. And the height has to be the perpendicular height, of course, so we need it. We need the height at right angles. So um, you can take either the nine or the seven as the base for this one, either the three or the 11 as the base for this one, and then the other one will be the height. Uh, so the area here is just going to be a half times nine times seven, uh, plus a half of 3 times 11. Okay, 9 times 7 is 63, 3 times 11 is 33, so we could either do a half of each of those and add them together, or if you want to avoid decimals, we could just say that this is the same as a half of 63 plus 33, which is 96, and so that means that uh, the answer here is 48 centimeters squared, which is one half of 96. Question seven, we've got 30 peoples in a class, 20 of them like maths and 18 like English, uh, twice as many peoples like both subjects as like neither of them, uh, how many peoples only like maths? So this sort of information is really uh, nice when you draw it on a Venn diagram. Um, you don't have to necessarily, but it's such a natural way of presenting this sort of information where we've got uh, two categories and, and the overlap of of both and neither and things like that. So I'm going to draw the Venn diagram here and we're going to put pupils who like maths in this one and pupils that like English uh, in this circle. Uh, so uh, we know twice as many pupils like both subjects as like neither of them. So people that like neither would be the outside of area of the Venn diagram. I'm going to call that X. And then if there are twice as many that like both subjects, we could put two X in the middle here. Um, because this number is just double what's on the outside. Now I can write everything down in terms of x because I know that uh, 18 pupils like English. So if you like this bit here and this bit together have to be equal to 18. It's the total of all the ones that like English, including the ones that also like maths. So this has to be, um, oh, sorry, this has to be 18 minus 2x, and then they add together to give uh, 18. And similarly for maths, 20 like maths. So this must be 20 minus 2x. And now they add together to give 20. So we've still got an x in here, but we haven't used the fact that there are 30 pupils in total here. So when I add all of these different sections together, 20 minus 2x plus 2x plus 18 minus 2x plus x, we must get 30. And we can use that to find uh, x here. Uh, so uh, these cancel out. And uh, then I've got 20 plus 18 is 38 minus uh, 2x plus x is minus x equals 30. Subtract 
30 from both sides and add x to both sides. And I'm going to get that 8 equals x or x equals 8. And then the question actually asks how many people only like maths. So we want 20 minus 2x here. 20 minus 2x will be 20 minus 2 times 8. So 20 minus 16 is 4. Uh, and that will be the answer here for. We could double check that we can fill in the rest of the Venn diagram and it will make sense as well. 2x would be 16, 18 minus 2x would be 2, and x would be 8. You can see all these add up to 30 um, and it's got all the properties that we wanted it to have. In question 8 it says the mean of 5 numbers is 25. Uh, Abby adds uh, 5 to the first number, 10 to the second number, 15 to the third number, 20 to the fourth number, and 25 to the fifth number to obtain a new set of five numbers. We want to know what's the mean of the numbers in the new set. When you're dealing with um, problems to do with the mean, thinking about the total of all the numbers is uh, really useful because we know that the mean is effectively the total of all the values divided by n, where n is how many there are, right? So if I take the mean of 3, 4, and 5, I work out the total. 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 12, and then I divide by how many there are, which is 3, okay? So if we're told the mean of five numbers is 25, um, then the total of them, uh, if there's five numbers, 25 would be the total divided by 5, so the total must be 25 times 5, which is 125, okay? So the new total is just going to be 125. Five has been added to the first number, so there'll be an extra five in the total, and another 10, and another 15, and another 20, and another 25 from all of those additions. So we add those together, 130, 140, 155, 175. We get a new total of 200, and so that means we get a new mean of 200 divided by 5, which is 40. Okay. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, do an even faster method here and just, uh, if you've really got this maths clear in your head, you could just add together uh, the bits that were added on here and uh, get 30, 50, 75, divide that by 5 uh, to get 15, and say that means that the new mean is 25 plus 15, which is 40. Uh, so if that makes sense to you, um, you could also do that for a very slightly quicker method. Um, but I think this is the way uh, most people would think about it, probably. Um, anyway, uh, do whatever you uh, can do and is most efficient. But uh, we get here that the answer is C40, uh, however we do it. What is the smallest possible sum of two positive integers whose product is 240? So we really want to think about what the factor pairs of 240 uh, are here. So let's just start writing them down actually. Okay, so there's 1 and 240 and I'm going to try and do them systematically. So uh, in order I mean. So the next one will be 2 and 120. Uh, 3 is also a factor, so that'll be uh, 3 uh, and 80. 4 is a factor, so we could have 4 and 60. Uh, 5 is a factor here. Um, if you do 240 divided by 5, you're going to get uh, 48 because 24 times 10 is 240, so it's also uh, 5 times 48. Um, and I could, you know, just keep um, checking and finding uh, as many factors uh, as I can here. Um, now let's think about the sums. Uh, so the sums of the pairs here, we get 241, 122, 83, 64. The further I go down this list, the smaller this sum is, and so I clearly uh, haven't got there yet. So I want the pair um, where the factors are actually uh, closest together. So maybe I can just keep going down this list, you know, 6 times uh, 40 gives me 46. I'm not even in uh, this list yet. So, uh, so perhaps rather than writing them all down, I will just look for ones um, that are more even. Um, so uh, actually, you might even do this to begin with, that instead of writing factors down in order like this, you could try and do something like a factor tree and say, ah, it's 240 is 24 times 10, this is 6 times 4 times 2 times 5, and this is 2 times 3, and this is 2 times 2. So I can sort of identify the factors nicely once I've got its prime factorization here, um, which is 2 to the power of 4 times 3 times 5. 
So I'm looking for a way of splitting up those factors so that they're quite balanced. Actually, nice a nice thing happens here, which is that the answer almost pops out at us, right? Because two to the four here is 16 and three times five is 15. So actually, uh, we are going to find here that 240 is 16 times 15 and uh, there are no, uh, comp uh, sorry, I've written this in a different place here, so that would be 16 times 15 and when you add those together you get 31 and I can't get any closer together so it must be that the um, smallest possible sum is 31. If you really want to um, you can fill in all of the other factor pairs in here as well and check that none of them give you 30 but you can see the uh, the pattern here and uh, and uh, there we go so that's uh, that's the answer B31. In question 10 there are 39 boys and 23 girls in a dance group every week six boys and eight girls join the group and no one leaves what's the total number of people in the dance group in the week when the number of boys is equal to the number of girls this is kind of an interesting uh, kangaroo question in terms of the strategy because there's a very mathematical way of doing it um, but because the numbers aren't enormous here um, we can also just do it by a very brute force method and there's nothing wrong with it at all this brute force method in fact I think for a lot of students it, you'll, well, you'll find it faster to do the brute force method than the sort of more mathematical method so let, let me show you both okay so the, by brute force here I mean I'm just gonna keep adding six and eight until the numbers are equal right so um, so this is the starting figures and after uh, one week I get to 45 and 31 and then to 51 and 39 and then to 57 and 47 you can probably do this even quicker um, than me when I'm also uh, saying them and, uh, and making the video um, you know this is actually a very uh, fast uh, method when you just do it on paper I'm just going to keep adding six to this number uh, and eight to this number uh, until until they become the same and of course I've just got to be careful not to make any mistakes uh, but there we go 87 and 87 right so um, the question says what's the total number of people when the number of boys equals the number of girls well it's just 2 times 87 and 2 times 87 then gives me 174 and so the answer is D 174 now I know a lot of you will say oh that's not really a very mathematical uh, way of doing it but remember this you know this question this paper is just about getting as many answers as you can in the time that was so fast really um, that why why think about it any other way in a way but if you want a really faster method and you're thinking about this you could also say well um, each week uh, the difference is going to uh, reduced by two right because eight girls join and six boys join if you look at the difference between these numbers initially there's a difference here between 39 uh, and uh, 23 of 16 and then the next week it's 14 and then the next week it's 12 then 10 8 6 4 2 and finally 0 so because the difference was initially 16 it's going to take eight weeks uh, 16 divided by 2 to for this to reduce so you could also say that you start with the 39 and the 23 and then you're going to add in eight lots of these new boys and girls uh, so eight lots of six plus eight um, so I just need to do now 50 62 plus 8 times 14 so that's uh, 62 plus 80 plus 4 times 8 which is 32 and of course this is um, also going to give us then 174 uh, which it does that's 142 plus 32 is 174 and so we get the same answer so this is a sort of more mathematical way of looking at the structure and if the numbers were much bigger this method would suddenly become more efficient but because the numbers are quite small uh, this uh, brute force method works pretty well for the kangaroo so I really hope that was useful if you're preparing for maths challenges, either the Junior Maths Challenge or the Kangaroo or the Olympiad papers, don't forget about my online courses. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. There's free courses there at the moment working through the Junior Maths Challenge from 2020 and 2021 with hints and solutions. And uh, there are other courses about the Junior Maths Challenge and preparing for maths challenges over there already. And over the coming months and years, I'm gonna be making 
uh, a lot more content as well. So sign up for the mailing list if you want to know about that or keep checking back here on YouTube uh, or over at the Maths Rush website.